Welcome to lesson, lesson six. Hard to believe there are six lessons in this already. And this is must know machine learning concepts. And this is obviously for the real world. All right, what are we gonna learn here? Here are our learning objectives, the things we're gonna learn in this lesson. We're gonna learn about frameworks. We're gonna learn about libraries. Yes, there is a difference between frameworks and libraries. What is it? We're gonna talk about the most used libraries in machine learning. This is a big one, so is this one, matplotlib, of course, and everyone's favorite, XGBoost. All right, a framework, a framework can live on its own. TensorFlow is a framework. TensorFlow, you can use TensorFlow to build end-to-end -end models. All right, so what about Py PyTorch? PyTorch is similar to TensorFlow, right? It's a deep learning library. Is it a library or a framework? Well, it's a little bit of both, actually. And so is TensorFlow. But in reality, it's more of a framework because I can use TensorFlow and PyTorch to build end-to-end -end models. So while it's not a hard fact, we commonly separate frameworks and libraries from entities that can live on their own and entities that need a language. A library, right, cannot cannot live on its own. It sits on top of the language. And most libraries we work with in the real world, here is Python, right? And then here is the lib. The lib is for library. And it must use Python. Right? It can't, you can't use the library on its own. It must be used in conjunction with Python. And the word we use, you're going to see in a minute, is import. We will import parts of these libraries, which is pre-bundled code. It's pre-bundled code that gets imported. Again, that's the word we use into Python so we can access the functionality of that library. All right. Now it's the same with R, but no one uses R. So we're not going to talk about R. We're going to talk about Python. All right. Let's move on. Pandas, up here we have pandas. Pandas is a library used for working with data. All right, let's take a look at the anatomy here of our pandas library. Here we're importing, remember we just talked about that, bring in. So import means to bring in. We're bringing in the functionality of what? Pandas, this library, so we can use it. All right, we're bringing it into an environment. Our environment here, this is going to be our right? An I, D, E, which is a Jupyter notebook, Jupyter notebook. That's what everyone uses. So here's Pandas. That's the library. He's the library. He's the lib. He's the keyword to use a library, imported Pandas as, and this is just an alias, right? An alias is just something we can use later so we don't have to type out the entire library every time we want to call it. Now, we don't need this, but it's nice to have, and you'll see it all the time. Data. Data is what? This is a variable. We'll call that a variable. All right. What do variables hold? Well, they hold data. Here, they're holding some data. They're holding calories and duration. All right. So this right here, that's really important. You see that? That's Python. This is Python specific to Python. Down here, too. You see that? That is not equality. EQ, shit, I can't spell equality. That is not equality, all right? That's an assignment. A single equals, a single equals is assignment. Assignment, right? Two equal signs, that's equality in Python. And yes, you'll have to know that because this is an interview question you'll see all the time. All right, so here, data, what are we assigning data to? We're assigning all this stuff to our data variable. All right, so let's go ahead and DF. We're going to use this as an alias for data frame. And we're going to load what? We're going to load our data right there, that data, into a data frame. A data frame is what? A pandas object. All right, and now down here with this line of code, we're going to print what? We're going to print that data frame we just loaded our data into so we can see it. All right, so pandas, 
over here, Panda, this is our library for working with data. You'll use it all the time. Let's move on. Scikit-learn is a library, can't live on its own, remember, not a framework, used for building models. No one uses it for that. But really, it's used for the tools. It's used for all the other things that we need in machine learning. We don't use it for modeling because it doesn't have any models that beat XGBoost. Let's take a look at some anatomy of Scikit-learn. Here is SKLearn. This is Scikit-learn, right? That's what that is. That's how we denote it in the code. SKLearn is the Scikit-learn library. From, all right, where's import? Well, this is a more Pythonic way to import something into our environment, right? So, so instead of hearing a port train test split, from Scikit-learn, import what metrics? Metrics are ways to evaluate models. For example, we want to import accuracy. That is a metric, all right? Now, you don't need to do it this way, and I don't. I always import the library. But this is a more Pythonic way to do it, and you'll see this, and you need to know what it means. From SKLearn again, from this library, Scikit-learn, we're going to import SVM. This is a model. Support vector machine. All right. Here, all right. Now, again, we said we don't use those, right? But this is just an example. I'm showing you how to import a model again. Don't, wouldn't use it. Why? Because it's not going to be the XGBoost. So here, here, this is really important, right? This is really important. Here, we're importing train test split from Scikit-learn, right? That, this is what we use. This is why I use and everyone else uses Scikit-learn because it has a whole bunch of tools and other functionality. Look at that arrow, that's a big one. That we need in machine learning. Up here, like metrics. Metrics is another tool we need in machine learning to evaluate our models. So Scikit-learn is used for modeling, well, more like traditional modeling. Let's call it more like trad. Oh, it's not writing up there. That's my pen. How about trad models, trad models? But more importantly, it's the tools. It's the tools we need as machine learning engineers to do our job. And this is why we use Scikit-learn. All right. Matplotlib. All right, Matplotlib, it's a library, right? Can't live it on its own, we import it. It's used for graphing. Nice pictures about our data. Again, what's this word mean? All right, we should know what this is just from this video. Bring into Python. We're bringing in the functionality of NumPy. That's a library, lib, that we haven't talked about, into our environment so we can use all the functionality in the library. Here, we're importing what we're the library we're talking about, matplotlib. All right, as what's that? That's an alias. Alias. It's used so we don't have to type out this all the time. We can just use plt. See down here, plt, plt. Here we're using numpy to create a random seed. Again, we were not going to talk about that. Here we're creating our x and y axes. Right, x and y axis to plot our data. This is a scatter plot, so I drew a line plot. So yeah, there we go, there's a scatter plot. Show is part of what? Matplotlib, and it's gonna print the model, right? And plot actually is two, and it's going to print a scatter plot. Well, it's not gonna, it's gonna define and create the scatter plot, and then the show is gonna print it, all right? Matplotlib, used for visuals, viz, Yules. Man, I can't spell today. Visuals. Used for visualization. All right. And what's really important is it's not used for visualization for other people. Like we don't create visualizations with Matplotlib and then give it to anyone in the business, right? It's used for MLEs, right? It's used by machine learning engineers to create visualizations about our data that aren't shared. We want to get insights about our data so it can help us mold our data into a more modelable state. All right. Moving on. XGBoost. He 
is the king. That's the crown. He is the king of building traditional models, right? So XGBoost is what? It's a library. Yes. Can't live on its own. And it's used for what? Regression problems and classification on structured data, which is what? It's about 80% or more of all real world modeling. All right. If you're new to this, go back and watch the first several lessons and you'll find out that deep learning is a small part of real world machine learning. Most of it is done with gradient boosters called XGBoost, GBs, called XGBoost, on structured data. And most of the problems are regression, and actually most, I, I don't know the breakdown here, but most of them are classification. This, this is what you'll spend most of your time building in the real world, classification models on structured data, right? We've already talked about structured data. Again, go back and watch the lessons if you don't know. So XGBoost is a library used for modeling, and it is the top gradient booster used for modeling. Regression problems and classification problems on structured data. All right. So what did we learn? We learned what differentiates frameworks and libraries, right? Frameworks, they can live on their own, live on their own, right? So that means I can use TensorFlow and I can build an end-to-end -end from start to finish machine learning model, right? I can't do that with Pandas. Can't do it with Scikit-learn. Can't do it with Matplotlib. Those are libraries, right? Those need, in our example, they need Python. In our example, not, I mean, the real world, all the real world is Python. So they need libraries to extend the functionality of the Python language. That's what these libraries do. Pandas is for data. What? It's a data library. What's Scikit-learn? We use it for modeling, but we really don't. Plus what? This is what we use it for. The tools, right? All those things we need, let's put it in parentheses, all those things we need to do our job as machine learning engineers, uh, K-fold validation, train test split, metrics, uh, testing, um, everything lives inside Scikit-learn. And this is why we use Scikit-learn. My put lib, visual, visualizations of our data. And this is visualizations for exploratory data analysis. It's not, that's a D, not a P, exploratory data analysis. It's not data analysis. That's a completely separate thing. Right? It's exploratory data analysis. And this is specific to machine learning engineers. Right? This is not specific to machine learning engineers. XGBoost. It is a gradient booster. And it is the king. You know, the king. It's the top model used for structured data problems. And what are those models? They are regression, reg, regression, and classification problems in the real world. All right, so all of our job in the real world as machine learning engineers uses frameworks and libraries. We do not, not, we don't, no one does, author models from scratch. Don't do it. No one does it in the real world. The people that are doing it work on the TensorFlow team, right? They're the only ones authoring, authoring models from scratch. You won't be doing that as a machine learning engineer. To be honest, you don't have the programming skills to do it. And most of you don't have the math skills either, right? And why would you do that? Why would a company hire you to write machine learning models when TensorFlow and all these libraries and XGBoost already exist? You can't beat them. Right? So the truth is they don't. This is what machine learning looks like in the real world. It doesn't look like authoring code for the models. All right?